Hey everyone, I'm Mike with a 4-Plot Realist Review, and this time I'm talking about Super Mario RPG The Legend of the Seven Stars for the Super Nintendo. It's a game that was released in 1996 and was developed by Square, who would eventually become Square Enix, and it definitely shows. Before I start, this isn't going to be one of those normal white bread reviews like, I gave this a 9.3 because it's got good graphics. Like, <laughs> cool. See you there, man. If I wanted to learn about numbers, I'd be playing Jumpstart third grade still. This review coming straight from the gut. Super Mario RPG is the best game of all time. If you think otherwise, I will knife fight you in a Kmart parking lot. And you know I'm serious because there ain't that many of them left. I don't even know where the nearest one is. But if you want to throw down, baby, I'm your huckleberry. So you might be thinking, isn't the best game of all time a matter of personal preference? I don't want to step on anyone's toes here. Unless your toes are in an area that doesn't recognize that this game is the best game ever, in which case, I'm Kevin Bacon, your toes are an abandoned train yard where I'm about to get the bad time feelings out the only way I know how. It's through the power of dance. Point is, I'm right, and here's why. So, Super Mario RPG. S-M-R-P-G-T-L-O-T-S. Smurpa Good Lots is a turn-based combat game in the vein of Final Fantasy with a bit of platforming and a lot of Mario charm thrown in. And like Final Fantasy, you get a whole party of characters to choose from. You start the game as Mario, nothing special. He's a plumber, mustache, fire, it's the usual. He's fine, he's your baseline. Your first partner is some talking marshmallow cloud thing? You hope it'll be like a Ghostbusters Stay Puff Marshmallow Man situation where he's all big and cool, but no. He's literally made of clouds. He cries a lot and his downy soft butterfly kiss attacks are going to have your enemies looking wildly around, wondering whether someone is blowing gently into their ear in a romantic manner. And then he's going to die because he's trash. So, you might think, okay, Mario's going to be the star, everyone else is just going to be trash to hold up Nintendo's headliner. But fear not, they are just burying the lead, they're lulling you into a false sense of terribleness for when Geno shows up. Geno is the best. This game really should be called Super Geno RPG, The Legend of Geno, carrying a bunch of scrubs. He's an archangel possessing a kid's doll that looks like a cross between Pinocchio and Puppetmon from season one of Digimon, like OG Digimon. He's got like go-go gadget bazooka arms, and he's throwing around energy attacks like it's Dragon Ball Z. Truthfully, this game should be divided into two parts, the part before Geno and the good part. And then you get Princess Peach and you get Bowser in your party and there's a weird dynamic where you're playing with, you know, the person you normally save and the person that's normally your enemy. It's a cool dynamic, whatever, I don't care. Back to Gino. He's from the star row. He's got you fetching the seven stars. And you can go ahead and substitute in whatever term you want for item you get for beating bosses, crystals, medallions. They all pretty much mean the same thing. Get out there, kill every bad thing you can find. And you find a lot. This game has some of the weirdest, most random bosses I've ever seen. Here's a list of a few of them in no particular order. A 10 foot tall living sword. A human bow that shoots arrows that paralyze people. An evil cake. Living Sword 2, Electric Boogaloo, the Power Rangers, and whatever the heck Punchinello is. I dare you, I dare you to look at Punchinello and take a guess about what that thing is. Because it looks like a teapot candle demon that steals the souls of left-handed children. And I'm not talking about a demon from like a common mythology, I'm talking second or third tier, like Polish or Bavarian mythology. Like children, make sure you use your right hand or Viscorgiorg will come and take you back to his murder lair, like that kind of mythology. Save your comments, because whatever your best guess is, it's wrong. Apparently, he's inspired by Pulsanella, who was a generic jester character in the 17th century Neapolitan puppet shows. I'm sorry, what? See, that's not how inspiration works. You can't just make up some nightmare fuel, slap some unrelated thing's name on it, and say you were inspired. This game's straight from someone's head, and we need to find them because they're going to kill again. That's what this game is, though. It's a wild ride. Every situation is weirder than the last, there's really no grass world, water world, fire world boss scenario here. Don't try to guess what's going to happen next. See, this game came out in the mid-90s when there was no such thing as a formula for a good game. There wasn't really a Call of Duty or a Fortnite to rip off. People were throwing stuff at the wall to see what sticks. And sometimes the stuff that sticks is really weird. By the end of the game, nothing even phases you. You're like, of course I'm going to jump in the sword's mouth. That's where the boss is. Of course I'm going to fight this god from another dimension. I've got a hammer and like 50 mushrooms. I'm clearly equipped for this. The only drawback I can think of is that it's a pretty short, linear game. It'll take you maybe 15 hours, and there's not a lot of side stuff to do. And back in the day, when a game cost $70 and you could buy a house for $150, that was a problem. But now, I welcome a short game that has a clear ending. This game is a perfect example of just how creative video games were in the 90s, and the graphics and gameplay hold up surprisingly well. So go find a copy of Super Mario RPG and The Legend of the Seven Stars today and play it for yourself. 
I'm Mike, and I'll see you next time. <coughs> Man, I cannot believe that I made a Tombstone reference and a Ghostbusters reference and a, and a Footloose reference. Yeah, I'm sure that's what the people on YouTube want. References to 80s and 70s movies about a 90s video game. Really hitting YouTube's core demographic there. But, yeah, it's still recording. It's fine, man. I'll just cut it in post. Yeah, there's no way I'll forget. <laughs>